All right, welcome, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Eric Coffey here, your host of the GovCon Giants podcast. Uh, and also now we are featuring our all-new podcast, Making a Giant. So if you have not seen our all-new podcast, Making a Giant with Maria Martinez, take a look on our YouTube channel today. Uh, this is part two of a two-part series on state, local, federal con contracts. Which one should I pursue? And in part one, we discussed um, the fact is you can do your research in attending or going to a small enterprise or small business advisory board meeting within your local municipality. So that was part one. We went into that. We went into the reports here uh, and we looked at some of the uh, ways in which you can do research and start learning about uh, this particular one. So if you missed part one, go back and look at part one. This is part two where I'm discussing the various stimulus package, the CARES Act, and then uh, now President Biden, his new package that he's proposing. And we're going to take a look at these packages and see how uh, they are changing the landscape and also how they're changing my stance on small business contracting at the local and state levels. So this is part two. If you missed part one, go back and see it. All right, part two. This particular report I found very helpful, and um, the gist of the report is, <coughs> excuse me, the gist of the report, uh, and let me pull up so you can see the title, is by brookings.edu, how much is COVID-19 hurting state and local revenues? Uh, and so someone went back, and they pulled the economy, and they did all these fancy studies, and what, and, and again, without reading it all, what I, I liked is that they project here, that the state and local government revenues will decline $155 billion in 2020, $167 billion in 2021, and $145 uh, billion in 2022, about 5 five, you know, five percent respectively, all right? Um, and then it talks about ex excluding the declining fees of hospitals and higher education, and those fees will be at $188, $199, $167 million. So that particular report essentially just grabbed the sum total of all of the losses and now what we do is again we want to do our fact-based research so we compare that uh, to this particular this is center of budget and policy priorities cbpp.org and we look and it shows you here the uh, pandemic causing sharp revenues drops in states and you can see here the diverse states decline from delaware 40 million up to say Connecticut, two point six billion, and then California, a whopping thirty two, twenty six to thirty two billion dollars. So it's a lot of money uh, being lost as a result of the pandemic. However, however, right, and so so let me let's just let's start with that premise. So given that the you know, and again, when when we we talk, we speak from a point of reference. Uh, my experience is uh, when I was doing state contracting and local contracting. Uh, even when times were good, just the nature of the the government personnel that were working in the offices, if they failed to submit your paperwork or turned it in um, on time, then you would get paid. It would, it would delay your payment. And maybe it only del delayed your payment two weeks, maybe three weeks, maybe four weeks. But as a fellow small business person, I understand how critical two weeks, three weeks, four weeks is to in terms of getting paid, right? I understand uh, the severity of that particular situation and scenario. So that's why when people ask me for my recommendations, uh, I tell them the truth, which is, hey, you know, they delayed my payment. If you can stand and you've got the cash flow to be able to stand being delayed by a couple of weeks, great. It, it creates an opportunity because a lot of folks are not going to be able to do that. So that's the beauty is if you can do that and stand uh, withstand being delayed for a few weeks or a month, or two months, then wonderful. And that was in good times. That was in the good times when the market was great. When the market took a nosedive, right, and the last time recession, right before Obama came into office and the market took a nosedive, uh, Obama only passed one stimulus package. And so the one stimulus package, while it helped tremendously get the economy going again, a lot of us contractors felt the brunt of that and, and we had to deal with the impact. Today, today, the government at this point has now 
um, they passed two stimulus packages, right? So there, one with the relief program that was passed back in March, and then the one that was just passed in December. So they've passed two relief packages, uh, $900 billion, and now another $2 trillion, and they are injecting money back into states and local governments. And we see that clearly here on this particular chart um, where it says funding overview for pandemic oversight, right? And this comes from pandemicoversight.gov, which is a government-funded website. And this is where you can track all of the spending to date. So total pandemic response, $2.6 trillion. State, local, and tribal governments, $291 billion. So again, that's a whole lot of money that they put right back into the states. The point we're making is this. That money, right, if we go back and it's offsetting these losses, which is allowing them to continue operating. So if if they're projecting 155 and 167 billion dollars and the government t- dumped in 290 right billion, so let's go back to this chart, 290 billion dollars. And again, it, it's not all the same. Um, that's helping offset uh, the particular losses. And it says here, while federal aid to state local governments this year has exceeded projected losses, the aid is only one time and state local governments are expected to face shortfalls for many years. And that's the point that we're making today. So the good thing is that all of you folks who've been working, getting paid, even if it's a little bit late, you've still been getting paid. Um, they haven't abandoned you. And that's the wonderful thing. So that's what's giving me hope about state and, and local contracting. The other thing that's giving me hope about state and local contracting is the fact that we understand um, Biden is now attempting to pass a new $1.9 trillion stimulus package, which I'm sure is going to have a whole lot more money into that for state and local governments. So again, going back to the point of the article, which is uh, at the time when they wrote this article, this was in September of 2020, there wasn't the second package that was passed uh, by the former administration. So at this time of the article, the initial package that was passed was sufficient to cover the 2020 losses and even some of the 2021 losses. And we'll we'll take a look at that here in this particular chart where uh, this is an interim reports cost that was released around August time. And it showed how the states were spending their money. So it shows uh, the payment amounts, the total incurred costs, and it shows the percent spent. So a lot of the states had not even spent in August 50% of their budgets. As you can see, Alabama, uh, Alaska spent 28%, Arizona, 19%, Arkansas, California, they, they went through um, Colorado. So you can see here in this chart by the uh, Treasury how the monies that were allocated, how they're the costs incurred, how they've been able to spend. And I'm sure it's not, it's just a matter of paperwork. So again, having worked um, in government for a few months, uh, a lot of times what has to happen is they have to, you know, charge it to a certain accounts and, and the codes and then be able to re, re bill for reimbursement back from the federal government. So I'm sure that that's what's happening here. These are internal measures. The money probably has already, let me go to open up this bigger chart. The money has already probably been spent, but they're now trying to allocate it to the right cost codes so that they can get the reimbursements from the government. But the point of the matter is the, the amount of money that's been allocated for state and local governments uh, has not even all been used or exercised in We'll see that here in the December package that was passed, the $900 billion that was passed, or the $1.4 trillion that was passed in December. Uh, we'll see here in that particular breakdown where it gave the, where is it at? Let me find it. Okay, it offered an extension for state spending, right, of the CARES Act money originally to 2021 of December. So it, it the government recognized this was happening and th- what they did was they went ahead and the new package and said, OK, we're going to give states more time to go through and um, basically uh, spend all the money that we've allocated for them. So those those factors give me a lot of hope and confidence to suggest to people that they can try state and local contracting. And based on the path that we're on. Everyone is going to continue to get paid, even though they may get paid late just because paperwork, bureaucracy, the timing, um, somebody lazy, someone didn't push a button, someone went on vacation. Uh, Even though they may get paid late, uh, they uh, will get paid. So that gives me a lot of confidence uh, 
and and again, if we continue along this path uh, that the uh, new administration is forecasting, the one point nine trillion dollar path, uh, that's going to be even further um, indication that we're going to continue. Uh, actually allocating money and resources and propping up these state and local governments to continue buying services, buying goods, procuring, uh, facilitating construction projects, engineering projects, professional services, and things going. Now, there is, okay, with all that said, uh, there is an issue where they've had to cut back. And that's, in this article is where they said a lot of the, 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 the reason why the governments have um, not, they've received more funding than, than money's allocated is because they did in preparation. A lot of the, the, the local governments started cutting back. They stopped hiring people. They started laying some people off. And so that reduced the amount of their budget, which allowed them to, to continue going. Because, again, um, if you are a mayor or you're a city legislator, uh, you did not anticipate or you did not know when the government's funding or relief was going to come. So you start making preparations to balance your books and balance your budgets uh, ahead of that time. So some some of the, the persons responsible did some really good st first steps, initial steps and measures to protect their economies uh, from completely going bust. And so that's helped drive uh, a lot of this. What you see happening is now uh, after these stimulus packages are passed, they're like, okay, we're able to to bring those persons back and we're able to offset some of our, our shortfalls in other areas so we can start hiring in other places. And, and that's really what happened. But the point of the, the gist of this whole story is that if we continue along this trend, along this path of bringing on uh, stimulus and propping up the economy, if we continue along this path, then that's great news for small business contractors who are considering starting at the, the local level uh, maybe because they know people there, maybe because it feels easier, maybe because their business is a localized type of business and it's easier to work in your own backyard than it would be to work, you know, 20 miles down the road. For whatever reason it may be, uh, maybe it's a financial situation, maybe it's past performance or experience or getting your feet wet. For whatever reason that might be, um, if this path continues, I see nothing but great news for small business contractors out there. So again, I definitely want to uh, let people know about what I thought uh, in terms of and what I was seeing out here, uh, because, again, all of these things matter. Um, believe it or not, it's bigger than a six hundred dollar check. It's bigger than the taxing the rich. It's bigger than um, looking at just the particular the farmers or the vaccine or testing and things like that. Um, remember, we're here to talk about, or advocate on uh, doing business with the government. Uh, but again, if, you know, if there are warning signs of things changing, I definitely want to be here to step in and let people know about the changing climate and the changing environment. And right now, the way that things are going, it looks like uh, there's, you know, the last administration wanted to do a good job uh, and, and prop up the government and prop up uh, industry. Uh, and, 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 and rightly so, because why? It, it, it was helpful with their reelection efforts. The new administration wants to come in and they want to set the right tone and they want to um, provide people with the encouragement that they're going to do a great job. So they want to go out and pass their own stimulus package. So regardless of the motivation behind uh, why people are doing things, they are, in fact, doing it. And so for that reason, I think that uh, I would be confident in saying I see the state and local contracting. Uh, again, people must have capital. You've got to have um, capital and you've got to have be able to sustain until you get paid. But at the very least, I don't see anytime soon the state and local government being able to hang any small business out high and dry. And I don't see any of the prime contracts being able to hang you out completely high and dry because there is so much money floating around. There is so much stimulus uh, and the government is making sure and, and putting dollars and putting not just dollars, but putting their voice behind ensuring that they prop up small businesses to keep the economy flourishing. Thanks so much. I hope this has helped someone out here uh, be able to better understand and navigate the waters. And thank you, Clubhouse, for giving me the ideas and the video content that I could make.